their seasons make Uncle Noli season from last season and the Seattle Felix seasons from previous seasons. It makes them look like Albert Einstein. Welcome to Grind. Happy Tuesday. Happy, Tuesday Happy birthday, Papong. Yeah. Yes, big day today for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, the Grind. Let, let's take a walk back to last season here. So you were four and seven after 11 weeks then, and then you won three in a row to get to seven and seven. And then you made the playoffs. And then, of course, you won the Arsenio Bowl trophy for the first time. Now, oh, yeah. now this season, you were also four and seven after 11 weeks. And now you have won two in a row and on the verge of possibly getting a third win in a row, depending on what happens. Is this deja vu? No, I, I would say no. Uh, for me, every season is different. Every week is different. Um, and sometimes in order to focus on what you need to for the moment and what's coming up in the future, you kind of ha- forget some of the things, all the details of the past. I mean, we have, we still have the, the, the like general feelings, memories and sentiments, but we also can't compare everything with what happened before. I think you said something similar at the beginning of the season. Pretty much. What did, what did we say? Every year is different. <laughs> Very true. Deep. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at last week here. A huge win over Nabil. And uh, exciting win for you. And about as devastating of a loss for anyone that I can remember. Because Nabil was in uh, either the West number one or West number two slot for a while. Since week seven. And this was the first week that he dropped and dropped all the way down to uh, number five. Have you exactly. seen anything like this before with four, six, and seven teams potentially, you know, two of the best two are, are going to get into the playoffs? But it, it's kind of a unique season, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, do you want to say anything here? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, definitely unique season, us getting this far, you know the last week of the regular season and still having four teams tied with the same record. Obviously we have tiebreaker. So total points four and all that plays in. Um, But I I would say like even thinking about last week's win um, versus Nabil, it's, it's, it's been a long season. So any particular week, any given week you could win, you could lose and it all adds up, you know? And so I think, in some of the previous Rosita League episodes, you know, you've talked about some must win scenarios, but I think going into it, you always have to feel like every week is a must win. Every week we we want to win. We need to win. If it doesn't happen for that week, you can't dwell on it too much, you, we, obviously, because it's also just fantasy football, but um, kind of move on, do what you need to. Um, and that's kind of, Going to our name, the grind, that's kind of our mentality. It's like you just keep grinding, keep going at it, um, and then, you know, until it's done. So, I mean, we're still pleased that it happened for us last year. Still unclear what's going to happen this year, uh, but we're excited to still be in the mix right now for this week 14. Right on. Let's talk about the the name, the grind, for a little bit. So you mentioned it's all about... Perseverance, taking it one game at a time, uh, one day at a time. Would you say that this is a good mirror for real life as well? Yeah, I I, I don't know if you want to just go ahead and say something. Well, I think it's, you know, you do what you need to do and you trust what resources you're given and you just roll with it, I think. Yeah, it's the grind is also personal to us. It's kind of a funny, uh, it's something that we say to each other. Uh, we've been saying it even through the years, um, you know, because 
after busy schedules, you know, you work hard and maybe you have like a weekend off or a day off where you can kind of hopefully get some rest. We kind of get ready for the next day and it's like, okay, all right, back to the grind. Um, but that's just kind of, you know, and that's why we kept the name for so many seasons. And even though it's something to change the name, to be funny or to match a player or um, even week to week with the matchups, we just kind of kept consistent with the grind. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a great reminder. I think it has spiritual connotations and definitely your team. I would say in fantasy and reality, you have shown that grit and that perseverance and the uh, just the momentum uh, to to get things done. So moving on to next week, John and Noah, and we asked you about this during the Thanksgiving um show and then i brought up that you were facing john and noah and there was a split second where you seemed very elated then you kind of came down to earth and said oh okay yeah yeah yes we are <laughs> so um i also can foresee that you're not the type that's going to take this match for granted you're you're gonna i mean you're gonna go in it regardless of how horrible john and noah have been for the last 11 weeks I mean, I still flash back to last season. I think we faced them early on in the season, maybe week one, week two, and they beat us really well. So, I mean, we don't take any, uh, I guess, uh, matchup for granted. Again, it's it. they've been doing pretty well these last couple weeks, even though their opponent outscored them and they got losses, but they've been, you know, scoring pretty well. Um, we've, we've had some horrible weeks where we've scored really low, so it really just depends. Um, but yeah, we're looking into this week. We are, you know, hoping that things will work out for us, at least again to the playoffs. Uh, I, you know, for that to happen, Monday, David, you have some scenarios that you've calculated. Uh, but we'll just see. We'll do our best to do what we think we need to do and see how everything else, um, you know, plays out. Perfect. Yeah. Well, you did be Spoken like a champion. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> You did beat John and Noah in week one, 106 to 64. So that was the uh, previous matchup. And not to look too much into projections, but you're projected to be ahead this week by a huge amount. And not only that, if you look, look at the comparison uh, board here, uh -huh. and eight of your nine players are projected to do better than uh, the other team. So, but I mean, I'm not saying that. Um, just because I think that you're heavily favored, but it is a factor going in, definitely. It is. They did put up, uh, to Rachel's point, they put up 125 this week. So, I mean, uh, they could, they have potential. We've had some, you know, our team has had some higher projections where we underperformed. So, again, we just don't know. We can't, there's a lot of, I think we'll, you know, try our best to lock in our players and bench the ones we feel we'd bench, but there's so many real life factors that you can't control uh, real life situations, games and, and all that. So, um, you know, we'll just try to have fun and see how, how it goes. And if it seems like we're still uh, hopeful to, to come out on top this week, then great. And if it's not, um, I'm, I can easily unplug and focus on other things because uh, the outcome's still going to come, whether I'm focusing it on it or not. James, you know what? This sounds more humble than humble business to me. <laughs> it does. <laughs> we haven't done our dance video yet, so. I'm just... Oh, okay. Oh. All right. <laughs> what has the Arsenio Bowl championship and holding the trophy for almost a year now? What has that meant to you and your family uh, this past year? I mean, it's it's fun. Uh, I wouldn't say I look at it every day, but it is somewhere that, um, you know, if people come to our home or um, sometimes as, as we're relaxing, I might glance up at it uh, and, and just remember, you know, it was a journey. The season was a journey. Uh, we had tough opponents in the playoffs um, to get there. And it's, it's just fun to have something to um, hold on to for the year. It was definitely fun to have it when we were doing the draft uh, and all that. And and even throughout the season, as we're seeing how this unfolds, um, we're also not particular, 
to to it like when it's time for it to go to the next uh person people you know we'll we'll have fully, you know it's all part of the fun and we'll, it's kind of like the end of karate kid one where um daniel son won the championship and uh johnny took the trophy and presented it to danny and said some nice words I and mean, it's kind of like that oh that's, that's a great good, uh, analogy yeah well, good stuff. Uh, all right. Any other topics that people want to discuss? I mean, that's the meat of the discussion right there, I think. Hi. Oh, here you go. Hey, Josiah. Hi, Hi Josiah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hope your night is well. Yeah, he's drinking water right now. Yeah, you are. And Gracie wants to say hi, too. Hi, Gracie. Yeah. Gracie. Hey, I, I had a good going? time uh, drawing yeah. with you the other night. That was pretty fun. Yeah, you have any, you want to say anything? She's been listening. She's been here the the whole time, just oh, nice. coloring and listening. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yep. Okay. Um, I think that's that's great. Yeah. Good interview. Perfect. There. May I say one 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 more thing? Yeah, please? go for it. Of course. Uh, it's just kind of uh in my reflection. I think I've said this before. Uh, but, oh, no, actually I have, I wasn't the one who said it, uh, Martin David, you said it, family is what it's all about. Uh, but that's just been uh, an ongoing thread. And I think whether the, you know, we win, we lose for us, any family time is a win. And that's, what's been so, um, meaningful about this league and being part of it. And even through the years, some of us return, some people leave and maybe come back. Uh, but it's, and we have a big family, so it's yes. not like, it's not going to be like everybody can be involved every year. Um, uh, but it's been fun. Uh, we really enjoy it. And thank you again so much for making this year special again in its own way. Thank you so much, Rachel. That was, uh, uh, it, this, I would say this is the best year we've had in terms of just the amount of hype and, uh, not just that though. There, there really is a unifying element to this league, which will make me want to stay in every year. I mean, I get a lot of text messages. I mean, I've gotten the most text messages from this season because of people wanting to know their playoff scenarios or whatnot, or just saying hi. I mean, that's what it's all about. And then it leads to other real life conversations as well. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, thanks, Rachel. Thanks to the entire league. Thank you, James, for uh, everything you do as the quote unquote assistant commish. And uh, quite honestly, I'm looking forward to passing the torch just to watch you do your thing. Thanks, cuz. Yeah. Well, you made it easy. <laughs> Got it set up pretty good. And cheers to Papung. Happy birthday again. Cheers. Happy birthday, Papung. Yes. How's your night tonight? It's going good. Um, so Tuesdays, I've been running with Nikolai. Oh, okay. So, the infamous Nikolai. Yeah. The- the fantasy guru or so the fantasy guru think. who is no longer into fantasy football. Oh, he okay. Was still giving. Yeah. Cause he talked, I talked to him about that uh, later and uh, he was like, yeah, I was just trying to give him advice, but honestly I haven't done any research. Like I don't, I, I'm not really paying attention to fantasy right now. That, that is totally making it into, into the show with a sound effect for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, D Money listened to him, and uh, yeah, too funny. <laughs> All right, well, uh, week 13 was a, a doozy for sure. Um, so I mean, the the big thing is Nabil, I think. Yeah, and... that's probably the biggest matchup of the week in my eyes. Second in the West, and now he's at the bottom of those uh, six and seven teams. I can tell. That he has, he still has optimism for this week, and um, and I'm thinking we can go ahead and hit the six and seven team discussion now. So, looking at that graphic that I um, put up earlier, I mean, so there, there are two things that stand out in terms of uh, the six and seven teams. There are the two teams that have the high TPF. That's Chris, Chris and Bonnie, Mark and Sarah. Uh, yep. I think they're like one point difference. Yeah. And yet they face, well, Chris and Bonnie faces Mike. Mark and Sarah face Chuck and CJ, who are, and those opponents are both fighting for the East Division title. So 
mm-hmm. not going to be a walk in the park at all, obviously for any of these teams. But I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if uh, both Chris and Bonnie and Mark and Sarah are going to pull it off for a win. I think one of them is going to lose. Right. I mean, at Mark least. and Sarah are coming off a huge week, but so is Mike. And so is, uh, yeah, Chuck and yeah. CJ. I would not want to be playing them because then, like you said, we have Rachel and June playing uh, uh, Middle Child. Middle and Child, then we yeah. have Nabil playing Lisa, who has been doing pretty well, but you'd still take her over um, Chuck and CJ and Mike, I think. That is a good point because even despite the loss, she's seven and one in the last eight weeks. Yeah. And, uh, and I still has the momentum. a couple of big players on bye week this week when I played her. So that might not be an accurate representation of where her team's at. Well, that's going to be quite a matchup for sure. But uh, um, I had calculated how many possible, let's just say, alternate universes there will be in terms of the potential amount of placement scenarios for all four of these teams. 24. Uh, there are 24 different possibilities for how this is all going to shake out. I mean, some can be weighted more than others in terms of the probability, depending on the TPF, the matchup that they're facing, all the factors involving the, the players involved with their matchups. It's uh, This may not be decided until possibly the final play of Monday Night Football. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. So what's your take on the top of the East here with uh, a huge win by Mike over Chuck and CJ last week, and now they're both tied at the same record, 10-3. and three. And, of course, Chuck and CJ have the advantage of TPF. Uh, but now it's just a matter of win or lose for both of these teams. Yep, it is. And, uh, you know, you get the belt and you get the prize money. So a huge, huge week for both of them. Um yeah, and uh, I don't know. Mike's been <laughs> Mike's been on a tear recently. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. How are things looking with you? And your uh, are you worried about your seeding at all? I mean, you know, the Lisa Nabil game's out of my hands. He's got a lot to play for, um, so I'm kind of rooting for him this week. Yeah. Obviously, it would be nice to be top three. Um, to your point, you get to you get slightly in theory easier matchups um and then you know not being a wild card so i'm not like really sweating about it <laughs> there <laughs> but you it go would be nice. yeah it would be nice um you're I'm all just... set man you're you're all set mm-hmm. like i was like if if derrick henry's in concussion protocol and out this week it's okay like i'm not gonna add drop quote running backs so i'll start one i have that's projected for two points and then just see what happens you know yeah yeah tpa is another interesting factor because that denotes who has had the the easier strength of schedule and who has had the hardest strength of schedule you know over the past season the one with the hardest strength of schedule or the the top tpa has been me 1660 fantasy points um, yeah. I'm at the top of the list there and followed by Mark and Sarah and of all the teams, DC universe. So mm-hmm. there is a, it's, I would say, I mean, not that I'm frustrated in real life here, but this has probably been one of the more frustrating fantasy seasons, if you will, on my end, just because of that. Uh, oh, yeah. if not for that factor, I probably would have had two more, one or two more wins. Yeah. And I would be in a different position here, but uh, alas, that's not the case. I think TPA is one of the most important metrics in the successful season. (laughs) And I bring this up because of the dead heat we're seeing between KBA and Mark and Sarah, record-wise, of course. And as you mentioned earlier, one one point difference between TPF, 1584-1583. Okay. So uh might be a good time to run through the tie-breaking scenarios. There are four of them. So as you know, the well, it's the uh, record, of course, is the overriding factor here. But if there are two teams tied for the same record, then the first tiebreaker is, of course, the TPF. If they happen to be tied, 
at the same TPF, then the next tiebreaker is head to head. So KBA defeated Team Mara 146 to 93 back in week six. So KBA would own that tiebreaker. And uh, and so therefore, we're going to see a winner no matter what. It's not going to, uh, there is no situation where they were they're going to be tied for the same head to head record because they only face each other once. So that's a good thing. Yeah, perfect. Is there another tiebreaker past that? The next tiebreaker down is actually TPA of all things, and the higher TPA would actually win because of the mere fact it denotes a higher strength or harder strength of schedule. I like that. And then in the very highly unlikely scenario where they have the same TPA, then it's just an ESPN coin toss. Perfect. Good to know. Yeah. Seattle Felix, the 2023 West Division champion. Get that guy a belt. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that I, I'm very happy for him. I mean, this is quite a turnaround from the the person who did used to hold the a tie for the wor- the worst losing streak, 10 losses in a row twice. That has, of course, been usurped or surpassed by John and Noah, who have lost 11 games in a row. Man, and the way Rachel was talking, I think it might be 12. Yeah, well, they are already guaranteed to have the worst Rosita League regular season of all time. Uh, although, if they win, they'll still have the worst record of all time. But DC Universe, if they lose, they will be tied with this with the worst record of two and twelve. Oh man, I'm not sure that uh, either team really cares about that stat, but I, <laughs> but I do. I, I think it's hilarious. Yeah, I, I I think it's cool. <laughs> it's it's fun when you're not part of the stat. Definitely. Well, it's definitely something that we'll be bugging them about for years. I would say that uh, their seasons make Uncle Noli season from last season and the Seattle Felix seasons from previous seasons. It makes them look like Albert Einstein. <laughs> 